Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about my thoughts on the Sona rework, or mini rework as the case might be, and kind of what I think for both Sona, but also where I think of these sort of miniature reworks going forward, and kind of how Riot has been handling things like this. So let's go ahead and talk about things though, of course, starting here with Sona. Now, um, I have not played a ton of the Sona rework myself, but I do have a, friend, a close friend who has played a ton of Sona, and so this is all kind of our thoughts together on sort of where, where the rework has landed and kind of where we both think the champion is at. And generally speaking, the reviews are very favorable on this. I think the biggest issue with Sona beforehand was just a lot of feels-bad mechanics, being forced to uh, make sure you were always having an ally in your bubbles, to make sure you weren't getting punished for the pretty obscene mana cost, and really sort of limiting Sona's ability to do anything on her own. It sort of felt like the champion had to be played with somebody else in order to do sort of anything, really, which always made the champion feel kind of bad, and it did mean that she felt a lot more like um, an older style support, which is that they don't do anything without a friend, whereas a lot of modern day supports, they do have mechanics that reward them for being with friends, but also that's not necessarily like their be-all, end-all, right? They do kind of, they do kind of have some advantages to being on their own and being able to make plays on their own, and the changes here to Sona do, I think, help by giving her incentives to be with friends, but not necessarily punishing her for being on her own, which I do quite like. And realistically, I feel like these are uh, this is a really good change for Sona in particular because a lot of, I think, the decision-making about Sona isn't necessarily in her mana expenditure, right? What spells she's casting, but specifically which auras she's trying to upkeep and which auras she needs in a particular moment, right? Like, Sona really needs to be thinking about more so which aura she wants active because she can't stack them like she used to anymore. So Sona being able to sort of think to herself, you know, do I want to be spreading the bonus damage? Do I want to be spreading the bonus heals and shields? what is it that I really want to be playing for is a much more important question to me than having to ration your mana and saying, do I want to heal for a tiny amount or do I want to give a tiny amount of bonus damage or do I want the bonus movement speed? And I can't do the bonus movement speed if I'm on my own because then I get punished by obscene mana costs, right? So like, in that regard, Sona is still gated by mana in lane, which I do quite like, and obviously that like just makes sense. That's how a lot of champions are gated. But then now out of lane, Sona has a lot more freedom to sort of do her thing. In fact, even towards the end of laning phase, I felt like re realistically I could sort of cast my spells off cooldown if I wanted to. Not that I was doing that anyways, but you can kind of cast your abilities when you need them and think up carefully about how you actually want to use them, which is also important because of how Sona's passive works, being able to choose which boosted auto attack you want instead of uh, just sort of using whichever one you happen to be on at the time, but being able to think carefully and say, okay, I know I'm going to W here to heal myself and then I'll hold off because I'm one away from having the uh, power cord. And so then I'll press Q and do the auto attack, which is the normal Sona combo for damage in lane, but just being able to more accurately think about what stance you're in is a more important question than mana, and so that's a, a really big deal, I think, for the Sona rework as a whole. Moving on to the ult change. Now, it's almost impossible to stack this passive with any degree of rapidity, and that's why I feel like more than anything, uh, mid lane or solo lane Sona is kind of dead, because while, yes, you can stack it on your own, only getting one stack every eight seconds or so whenever your Q comes up, like, even if every single Q hits a champion, like you're just not gonna stack very quick. Like, as it is, it feels like you pretty much are only ever getting this passive fully stacked at, like, 30 minutes into the game. Obviously, maybe there are some things I could be doing slightly better to maximize chances of actually, you know, hitting multiple champions or getting multiple heals and making sure the shields get value, right? Like, I'm sure, like, really good Sona players know these sort of... Um, intricacies and can figure out how to perfectly min-max the Sona passive stacking, but it feels like this is mostly going to come on in the mid to late game scenario, which is like a fine time for it to come on as well, because I really do feel like it's a very powerful ability to have access to, and you don't want this applying uh, very early in the game because of how oppressive it can be. Uh, my friends kind of summed it up pretty well here in that they said, you know, always assume Sona's ult is up. That doesn't mean it's a short cooldown, just always assume it's up. And that's kind of what it feels like. Like, Sona can really sort of start off a fight or start off a pick with Crescendo, and then by halfway through the next fight, she has her ultimate again in order to kite backwards or peel or continue the chase or what have you. And it really makes Crescendo more of an option rather than a think very, very carefully about this button because it's the one fun button you get to press in a game. Like, and Sona having access to Crescendo more often is insanely powerful. Like, I think a lot of people have sort of forgotten how good this button is because they're about a lot of other champions with AoE, crowd control abilities released since Sona. 
Obviously, you can think back to champions like Rel or champions like Seraphine, where you have things like Magnet Storm or um, Seraphine R, where it's just like really, really powerful abilities, and it really becomes difficult to, um, you know, think like, oh, well, Crescendo, well, who cares? It's just Sona, right? But like, make no mistake, like, this really does a ton for teams, and I can't count the number of times that hitting a multi-man Crescendo has actually been able to either turn the tides of a fight or prevent the enemy team from turning a an advantageous fight into just a complete rout. Like, it's a very powerful ability, and Sona gaining more access to it just makes her even stronger and more um, useful than a lot of other supports can be because she sort of says, well, yeah, I don't have as impactful QWE as other champions can have. I have a very strong R that's also up a ton of time. So in that regard, it's it's a very nice change. I really do like it for where Sona is at, and I think it's a good way to help breathe a little bit more life into Sona. Now, obviously, as far as, like, you know, new champion design comes into play, I do feel like Sona still feels like an old champion. She is a lot more about this sort of calculated, considering what you have at your disposal and making the correct choice and trying kind of having to rash, uh, ration what it is you're doing and what it is you're able to have an influence on the team fight. right? Like, Sona's funny because you're really not pressing buttons constantly throughout a team fight, even though you are, but a lot more about Sona is delivering your buffs to where they need to go in a team fight. And in that regard, like Sona, that's still Sona's like number one goal in a team fight is make sure that everyone gets a heal, everyone gets a shield, everyone's getting boosted movement speed when they need it. Like that's kind of her thought process rather than, you know, aiming skill shots or making sure buffs end up on the right people and, and trying to aim everything. Like, like that's sort of a lot of the newer champions is the sort of Twitch reaction play and figuring out exactly when to use certain buttons. And Sona is a lot less about that and a lot more about where can I be right now to make sure my auras have the most impact they possibly can have. And naturally, being able to cycle through auras much faster makes this a little bit easier, but there's still enough of a town downtime, even with the maximum stacks of a Celerando, where you do still have to consider what stance you need to be in and when. There are a lot of times I can think of where I've pressed Q to maybe get a little bit more damage in or spread the damage, and then been like, oh, I didn't give a shield to this guy, and I really, really want that guy to have a shield right now, or he might die to a dot or an incoming auto attack or whatever, and then mashing on the button to make sure that that goes off, right? So, like, there is still some decision-making about actively pressing the button in which stance you are in immediately, but I will still say that there is a lot more, you know, careful thought process about exactly what it is you want to do and making sure that you're in the right stance for the situation at hand. So in that regard, I do really like where, how they kind of preserve what, what exists of old Sona, but also made it so that she feels a little bit more modern and a little bit better as a champion as a whole. And realistically, I think that this is the sort of best advantage that Riot have with doing these sort of mini reworks. Obviously, we have the Shinja rework, which makes him feel like a totally new champion. The Sona rework, which didn't necessarily do that, but does make her feel a little bit better. Um, and the Amumu and uh, Lucian changes that are coming before too long, which the Amumu changes are a little bit less about modernization, or, or a little bit less about balance and more about modernization. The Lucian changes are about balance, make no mistake. Um, but Amumu, right, these changes are intended to make this champion feel like a modern champion as opposed to a season one champion, which is what he is. And in that regard, I think that they can do an interesting job of doing this forward. And if Riot are going to insist on not reworking champions unless they're going to get a full VGU, I feel like this is a good way of breathing life in champions that have maybe slightly subpar gameplay or maybe slightly older feeling gameplay. I can even think about champions like Zillion, for example, where he feels old to play, where doing these sort of mini reworks can really help these champions shine and really help them feel like just better champions as a whole and more comparable to their more modern counterparts to the point where you can play Sona and you can play Seraphine, and you can actually kind of tell that these two champions, while similar in uh, thematic perspective, are very different from in terms of how they want to play, and it's more comparable rather than saying, oh, well, Sona's old, so who really cares what she does, right? Now there's sort of a reason to say, this is why you play Sona versus this is why you play Seraphine, so... Those are just my thoughts, though, on the Sona rework, though. Let me know your thoughts on all this down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your guys' opinions, especially if you're a diehard Sona main. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.